Thank you for joining us on Adobe Live. My name is DTM, a.k.a. Delta Tango Mike, and we are here with the amazingly talented artist Jonah Loeb on Adobe Live as he finishes character sketch in Photoshop. Learn how to complete an ink drawing and work on shape language. Join in on Jonah's workflow as he creates a final piece with his character, Quiet, an adventurous skeleton from his comics. Good morning, Jonah. It's great to have you on Adobe Live. We are ready for your magic. Wow, that's a, a, a great setup. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited. Uh, I, I like the idea that you have a skeleton character because I love skulls. I yep. even started a whole series of skull drawings last year. And uh, so I, I'm interested to see where this little character goes and what he's up to. <laughs> I'm I'm really interested to show it. You know, this is a, a thing that I kind of conceived of um, during the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll definitely I'm happy to show a quick preview of the stuff I've done or, or um, before, and I would just love to set that up then and explain why I'm doing quiet now. Nice, nice. And while you get ready to share, want to give a big up to everybody joining us on the Behance chat. Please let us know you're here by leaving a comment in the chat. We got Wade in the house what's up wait thank you for hanging out in the chat with us garrett steve uh bruce yes yes uma corn how you doing welcome all oh, and there it goes wade with the links to jonah's work is beautiful go follow jonah everywhere all of them wherever he drops something new <laughs> I, you want to keep up and stay up to date yes and of course francisco is in the house welcome everybody go for it jonah Talk all to right. us. I'm on it. Hi, everybody. Uh, I just heard a bunch of names. I know it's good to see you all. Um, yes. Uh, so um, my name is Jonah Loeb. Um, I uh, started my career in 3D game design. Um, mm. Are you able to see that, Daniel? Yes, um, that's awesome. That's So this is a giant from the game Skyrim. I modeled them based on my father um, to make to look like my dad. Um, <laughs> And so I was a character artist, and so I kind of did a lot of the mm -hmm. 3D character modeling um, mm -hmm. and and texture art for games like Skyrim, for games like Fallout. Uh, these are just pictures from from um, Skyrim. That was mm -hmm. my personal favorite to work on. Okay. Um, and I worked there for seven years, and then after that, I went kind of independent, and I started just doing moving over to 2D art. Um, so rather than do this 3D, very technical, heavy. Um, game design work I just kind of wow. wanted to challenge myself keep myself fresh I was you know looking at all these illustrators and all these painters and I thought to myself like I want to do that like that's an amazing ability that I mm -hmm. want to be able to do so mm -hmm. as you can tell I have continued to focus on creature design and character design in that time um, and in the years after I left Bethesda I ended up streaming for Adobe and even little drawings like this that took you know um uh, 20 minutes basically uh, these were part of an exploration series that i did mm -hmm. on um adobe when we were on twitch and then when we moved over to behance um mm -hmm. and basically it was kind of an, a a really fantastic opportunity for me as a um you know as an as an aspiring illustrator basically to flex my abilities to push myself past the limits and mm -hmm. with um the help of the fantastic Adobe audience, uh, some of whom are here now. What's up, guys? Um, I was able to be pushed uh, by the audience. You know, they would always suggest things, suggest new ideas. I'd always try new um, concepts, new ideas, and new color palettes. Mm -hmm. And really, uh, those streams with Adobe were an effort to constantly push my abilities. And then. Yeah. I graduated from that later on, um, a couple of years later, uh, while I was still doing streaming for Adobe, I was doing uh, pen and ink drawings. Mm -hmm. And the whole point of this was again, push my abilities in the 2D realm and figure out kind of like uh, what I could do. And then I was working, because I was working in <laughs> pen and ink, uh -huh. um, uh, it basically uh, it made sure that you know when I made a mistake, I couldn't go back. And so it, yes. it helped me divorce myself from the mm -hmm. idea that everything has to be perfect. Um, and coming from a digital background, that was hard for me to parse. But uh, mm -hmm. And just like with the Adobe audience, well, many of whom overlapped with my Instagram audience, I would ask for a word. In mm -hmm. this case, it was uh, poisonous. In this case, it was double. Um, oh. And they gave me the word of the day. And mm -hmm. then I would create an original illustration based on that, again, with the point of pushing myself. Wow. Uh, in the interim, I've done some work based on video games. Like this is this is based on Doom. Basically, what if the main character himself was a demon? Um, and then 
Um, most recently, I've moved on to, um, I, I just published a book uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, called Marvel uh -huh. Anatomy. Uh -huh. and, and Marvel Anatomy is basically a big coffee table book all about um, looking inside uh, superheroes mm -hmm. uh, and figuring out how they work uh, from the inside out. So basically, how do these abilities really function? Um, and and basically being able to see that um, kind of from the inside out. So it was a really unique opportunity for me to, again, push my illustrative muscles and, mm -hmm. and come up with new ideas. Um, wow. So yeah, so that's kind of catch up, to catch up. And then basically during the pandemic, I started thinking I had a, I had a kid. She was cute. She was little. She <laughs> had you know a fat little belly and a big head and all these things. And I just thought to myself, um, maybe I should ease up on the dark demons and monsters, and maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should do something cute. But you know, uh -huh. but it's still me. So I you know uh -huh. it has to be like a little creepy. Yeah. So my main character here is quiet. This is he, this is him. I just did these sketches before the stream, just trying to, you know, I'm just trying to get a sense of him and who uh -huh. he is, mm -hmm. um, you know, because if you're going to go ahead and make a whole comic book or in my case, a graphic novel based on this character, you want to be sure that you understand what they look like from all angles. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to have a feel of their, of who they are. Um, mm -hmm. So this is quiet and this is the antagonist uh as of yet unnamed but i'm thinking i'll uh -huh. come of at the moment his, his name is just horns because he just has horns. huge horn yeah. helmet <laughs> and essentially this idea just came from you know what if you know if you're playing video games you know often you're the hero you're you're the the the, the, the protagonist and you have your big weapon and you go into the dungeon and you destroy all the undead and you take the treasure and you leave and i thought to myself well what if the undead were just minding their own business Mm -hmm. What if they're just living peaceful lives and this dude just rolls in one day and, and destroys all of your friends. And then you're here. You are just this one little le <laughs> level one skeleton. Uh -huh. And you're like, and basically you're like, this guy has to be stopped. Like he's uh, going on to right. level two. He's going to kill everybody in level two, too. And level three. And, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and so I don't know if that's exactly the story that I will go forward with, but that mm -hmm. was the idea. I was like, well, what if the whole thing is flipped? Like, what if the, the big human is the bad guy and the little skeleton is the good guy? Um, mm -hmm. And I kind of just got really, I got really attracted to the idea. It was a really charming world. I, I posted um, some um, uh, pen and ink works about him on um on my, uh, I did some work on on Adobe. I did some work, put some work on Instagram, and people really responded to it, and they they mm -hmm. really they like him. So that told me that I have got something there. So now that yes. I finished Marvel Anatomy, I really want to start exploring this. So today on the stream with you, I was hoping that we could just basically delve into the inking process and kind of see what that looks like, and hopefully, uh, you know. I will learn something about what I want to do. And hopefully uh, you all will learn something in the process. I don't know. Yes. Yes. It's beautiful. Amazing artwork. Everybody in the chat is going crazy. Bruce says, I uh, can't wait for a quiet's release. And he says he saw you at a uh, book release recently. Yes. So he did. loves up, the book. Yes. Yes. D seven, a says amazing. Steve, and Francisco and uh, General Kenobi is loving the work. Thank you all for the comments in the chat. Very nice. There was a question that says, how do how do we get the drawings, drawing power? Is it possible to learn this drawing power that you have? Or were you just born with it? <laughs> Maybe it's Maybelline. Um, <laughs> no, I, it's, you know, it's a combination of things. I think, I think um, I'm a strong believer that, that anyone can be an artist and that, mm -hmm. and that, you know, just to, so, in, in some form or other, I mean, I truly think that the need for humans to create is part of what being a human is, you know, you know, lots of different animal species out there in the world, but we're the only animal species who can conceive of something that has never been and then create it, you know, that, you know, mm -hmm. that, and so, um, I think that creativity is what sets us apart from from animals, and I think that the desire for such expression is part of what makes us human. So, but mm -hmm. I know that they're asking about drawing in particular. I think you, it comes down to practice, practice, practice. I have seen, mm -hmm. I, I have, ha I have patrons and everything on Patreon who um, I've just watched them grow. You know, and and some of them, you know, from the beginning they were aspirational artists, and I, you know, I wasn't sure whether or not like they had it in them to kind of continue on the journey and continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, every single one of them who has stuck with it has evolved in these like 
in, in, in impressive and myriad ways. And mm -hmm. I think what's beautiful about art, uh, truly beautiful, is that um, there are so many ways in which you can express yourself and there are so many pools of talent. You know, I, I went from 3D to 2D, you know, mm -hmm. but there's like, but there's a million um, styles you can embrace and a million programs you can work in, etc. Mm -hmm. And I think we all have, just by virtue of being individuals, we all have something unique to say. And that comes yeah. through, and, and that, that thing that you want to say comes through in the colors you use and the lines you use and the subject matter mm -hmm. you choose. Mm -hmm. And so, um, people might see my work and they want, might want to be able to do exactly what I do and you know, the way I do detail or exactly the way I do this or that. And I believe that, yes, if you work at it and practice, you can do those things. But I think so much of the, so much of the pleasure that comes from being an artist and pursuing this career and this, mm -hmm. or this hobby is that you get to find your own voice yeah, and yeah. It, it, it doesn't take more, you know, I've been, I've been an artist for, you know, my whole life. If somebody took two, three years, to work at one cool thing really well, I guarantee you I couldn't do it as well as they could. Mm -hmm. right. right. You know, you you know what I mean? It's like we all have something unique to bring to the table. And mm -hmm. and I think that's what makes art very special. That's right. There you go. I hope you guys were listening to this. And if not, go back to the replay and record that little bit of the answer because <laughs> yes it's a combination of things but yes wade a cuff it does start with practice he says practice you say <laughs> yeah yeah oh i know and yeah. wade is on here all the time practicing i mean that's just right put, you know, he, just putting in the hours you know that's you right know? yeah 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 and uh general kenobi says there's always a catch that is true but that's it uh whatever you invest into it you will get back but it's going to take yeah. that dedication and that time yeah, Very I think nice. I, mm -hmm. I think just the the when you asked me that question, you know, or were mm -hmm. or was I born with it? I don't think I was born with special abilities. I think I was born with a special passion mm -hmm. and ability mm -hmm. to focus. That's what you know. When I, when I you know I have a kid now, I ask my mom mm -hmm. like, what was it? You know, what's the difference between how I used to do art and when my daughter does art? And you know, and my daughter's you know fine. You know, she's only three and a half. I'm way better mm -hmm. than she is. Um, you know, I, I don't right. remember facing it, you know, yet. I'll wait till she's like five to be like, I'm better than you are, you know. Uh -huh. No, I'm, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but but basically, my mom's answer was, you know, you were just a little bit more focused mm -hmm. on it. And that's it. And so that's and what it comes down to is focus and the time you spend doing it. That's right. Yep. Yeah, that is true. Focus, uh, focus uh, your your time into it and, uh, and and let that be that one thing that attracts you time and time again. To mm -hmm. sit down and and, uh, and draw. Way says a healthy competition with your daughter. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna replay like the the relationship I had with my father, where he would never let me win a, a chess match ever. Mm -hmm. Like you know, like mm -hmm. I'm six years old. He's like, you want to play chess? I'm like, yeah. And then he just beats me. And he's like, well, better luck next time. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's wanna, how I'll... villains are born. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, Dan. Question for you or for the audience, which of these two quiets do you want me to start inking with? I, I did. I just did one basically standing um, and then one just like doing a little tree pose. It, you have a, you have a, any thoughts on which you'd prefer to see done? Which which uh, there it is. Uh, chat folks, which one of the two quiet characters do you want to see uh, the inking on or the even the villain? Huh? Yeah, huh. I was I was hoping we can have time to do both, but I guess right. you know, we'll, we'll have to find out. We'll but. time it and see how it goes. I like I prefer the yoga pose. OK, uh, because it's playful. Yep. And uh, anybody else see something? Oh, wait, says digging the relaxed pose myself. All right. So there's one and one. Anybody mm -hmm. else? What's up? What do you say? General Kenobi says I like the tree pose. Steve says tree pose. Way says why not both? <laughs> Thanks Carrie. a lot, Wade. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Just give you extra work. Uh, Terry says tree pose. Bruce says the pose on the right. Uma Corn says both. D tree pose. Garrett tree pose. So I think it sounds like a lot of tree pose votes. Tree pose votes. Tree pose, tree pose it is. Okay, so that's group. very good. Very very helpful, everybody. Thank you very much. I am going to start with the tree pose. Um, and I'm just going to really quickly go over the draft here just so I can figure things out a little bit, a little bit more. So... The the way the reason I actually liked the, the this one a little bit better, um, mm -hmm. but 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 a lot of that 
had to do with the fact that it was a safe pose. He's literally not doing anything. And so all mm -hmm. I had to do was focus on these other aspects. But mm -hmm. this tree pose version uh, creates complexity and interest. Mm -hmm. And I thought that with the villain looking the way he does, um, you know, a very dynamic, you know, pose, I thought I needed something a little bit better for him. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm still trying to figure out kind of like, um, I love Quiet as a character, but mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks, I've fallen in love with drawing the villain because he's so angular and and mm -hmm. actiony and just in just everything about him is so intimidating and that mm -hmm. plays to my strengths a lot mm -hmm. uh in drawing intimidating things and i'm like well i can't just stick to my <laughs> to what i'm comfortable with doing you know i can't just stick right. to my safety safety net and so um i think there's something about the round forms of quiet that i really like but i need mm -hmm. to figure out a way to make them dynamic um, to the degree where I want to look at, you know, I want to draw him all the time, you know, that kind right. of thing. So right. I think, it, you know, it, just like we were mentioning before, challenging yourself constantly and making and pulling yourself out of your com comfort zone. That's kind of been my priority. Yep. I, uh, I go through the same thing. I like really rough and mean looking characters, but when I'm working on children, stylized artwork for, for children projects, it's uh, sometimes it's too much. It's like, it's too much sugar here. And uh, mm. and I need to take a break and, and draw something evil and mean. <laughs> and yeah. <they> come back. <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to you, you want to challenge yourself. But sometimes like I, I need something that I'm, I'm, I'm really good, uh, very comfortable with. So let me do that real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so, sometimes you need to win. You got to feed your soul, mm -hmm. you know, if, mm -hmm. if, and if those demons are the chicken soup for your soul, <laughs> then that's it. There you go. <laughs> yes. Uh, Way says that's right. There's more fun in danger. Safety isn't all that fun when making art is uh, when making art to be clear. Safety isn't all that fun. Uh, yes, typing is hard. Typos are easy, says Wade. Yeah, because I, I couldn't. I, I thought I read it out loud, right? Uh, but yeah, there you go. And I like um, what you said about the pose. That yes, since you're still working all the details. Um, you you may or may not have stylized some of the bones because this is not one of those Marvel illustrations where you go all in and draw every bone in the hand mm -hmm. no and way. in the foot and so on. So 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 you want to make it kid friendly and also a little stylized so that we pretend that all the bones necessary bones are there, and mm -hmm. uh, it, and it still looks cute. So there you go. That's exactly it, and I think mm -hmm. that like. I think that it's it's important for my development as an artist to figure out how to do this stuff without going all in, you know, mm -hmm. like that's been my kind of, you know, my MO, you know, in the, in the games world, when I was doing 3d models, you know, you have to do every inch of a model, you know, I would spend right. a mm -hmm. day working on the underside of a character's foot, you know, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. and with this, it's like, how do I set myself up for success so that I'm not, you know, so that doing these drawings doesn't freak me out, you know, it doesn't like the, just the sheer weight of having to do all that detail every time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to, I'm going to destroy mm -hmm. myself and destroy my yeah. self confidence and destroy my time, my schedule. So, but, yes. but, but figuring out, you know, also, you know, it's also been a journey trying to figure out uh, what's important about the characters, about their, the looks and about um, the aesthetics that mm -hmm. need to stay, what mm -hmm. can go, Mm -hmm. um what the right balance is between realism and um you know even even right now i'm uh, i'm looking at this and i'm thinking to myself does he have collarbones you know like 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 does he like right. i don't know like mm -hmm. um hmm. and i'm not sure that he does um he doesn't have a lower jaw which and that's why right. he can't speak his name is quiet and he mm. actually can't he actually can't speak wow um yeah i thought that would be an interesting <laughs> an interesting character yeah. flaw, you know, flaw to have or weakness rather. Yeah. It's it's cool. And and, not, and no neck, so that way uh you don't have to sit there and draw the vertebrae of the neck yeah, coming exactly. off of the spine. Yeah, you gotta think about those things. So we're gonna ask you very specific things right now. Yeah, please. Um it's uh obligatory question, says Becca Smith. Thank you, Becca, for the question. Asking about the inking brush. So let's uh go into you are using Photoshop. What inking brush are you using and why? Um, I am, have a very uninteresting answer to this. So I have not been a traditional inker. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's not something I've ever really done. And so I'm very new to this whole process. I have a bit of an old hardware um, system. I have a Cintiq 21 UX. It's 12 years old. The sensitivity is not all there. Mm -hmm. I think I um, I uh, freaked out uh, Francisco, the tech guy, um, hopping hopping on this call. He's like, <laughs> he's like, how old is it? What? How old? <laughs> oh, okay. What you is know, it again? Say that yeah, again. Yeah. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> he like literally during the call with him, I like hopped on the internet and I was like, how much does this new version cost? I think I need to, uh -huh. but so I have this, I have kind of an outdated system. And so I'm still trying to find my own way. This is uh, mm -hmm. Becca. Is that the name of the, the, the person who had the question? The person who asked, yes, Becca Smith. Yeah, huh? Becca. So I have, I'm, I'm still trying to figure that out. The brush, the brush I'm using at the moment, I downloaded from um, Control Paint, um, the website, uh, which has some tutorials and that kind of thing. It's called the Control Paint Basic 3. Mm -hmm. And they have a soft brush, a hard brush, a flat brush and mm -hmm. i just modified the soft brush to be really hard mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. you know it still had a little bit of pressure sensitivity but it was but it would basically give me a very hard line every time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now i did um have to um um update to photoshop uh, um 2023 mm -hmm. right before this call which was a little anxiety inducing but uh, and then I lost access to um, some tech I was going to use, which is the mm -hmm. Lazy Nozumi Pro, which is a um, just a way to create nice smooth lines. It kind of drags out the lines in such a way as to create mm -hmm. more smoothness. That became um, uh, no longer suitable, uh, or I needed to update it basically um, for this, and so I did not get a chance to do that. So I'm basically just eyeballing these lines and just hoping yeah. I do a decent job. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I'm using basically, it's a very basic brush. It is nothing fancy. And uh, any little uh, 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 issues I'm having with it, I'm trying to rectify just by going in there and manually erasing. Yeah, because I see you using the keyboard shortcuts. You were rotating the screen a second ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's that rotate uh, tool. Uh -huh. Exactly, nice. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, let's see, you said, uh, Steve says, uh, that um uh, quiet caught a bonefish this big <laughs> uh, and steve says i remember reading comics as a kid and seeing that there was such a specialized job as anchor and yes there are specialized mm -hmm. jobs uh and uh so because they're all very uh, it takes time to master that particular thing so that when you're looking at the drawing it looks like what it's supposed to be and uh, and not a mess. If I was doing it, it would look like a mess. But if a specialized person does it, then they know exactly how to draw the lines out. And uh, Becca did say that watching you erase erasing the line to get the line weight that you want is a lot of patience. You know, my hope is that I basically um, uh, find find a better inking brush. Uh, you know, this mm -hmm. again, this is part mm -hmm. of the exploration. You know, and and, mm -hmm. and exploring the tech and figuring out figuring out your workflow is kind of part of the process. And so, mm -hmm. Becca, when you're seeing me doing these subtle erasing and that kind of thing, I hope to not have to do that as time goes on. <laughs> Truly, you know, like I, yeah. I really, it would be nice if I can figure out uh, a flow. But because you're you're literally witnessing somebody who is, I'm a, I'm a veteran artist. I am a newbie inker. You know, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's all, you know, my instincts for what I know I want to see are there. My ability to get there, terrible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> so you're yeah. seeing you're seeing me like experimenting in real time. And, and ultimately, I think, um, you know, I hope it's heartening to people to see how much uh, I might struggle with some aspects of, you know, the line making lines, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, and, and I hope that it also demonstrates how much learning we have to do on the job right, even right. as professionals you know mm -hmm. especially when you're uh, tr working on a different medium that you're not used to because a lot of your work that i see jonah is uh painted a lot yeah. of painting mm -hmm. and uh and so your first in thing, instinct is going to be to just start painting the character and you'll get what you want out of it <laughs> but because you want it to have that comic book feel you got to have the outline you got to have the nice. outline. Yeah. Like this is yeah. this is one thing I learned in during Marvel Anatomy and I realized and also one thing I learned on the Adobe streams is that if mm -hmm. I just dive in and start painting it can be a very gratifying experience but because I didn't do the hard work at the beginning of like really rigorously mm -hmm. setting up the image I end up paying for it on the back end where mm -hmm. the art that I work work on ends up taking much longer than it should because I'm I'm trying to handle details that I did not get right you know mm -hmm. um 
in the first, you know, two, three hours of, of the painting, you know, so <laughs> right. Yep. And you, you know what it's mm -hmm. like. I mean, you can, you can add polish and flavor as much as you want, but if the, the fundamental composition is lacking, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's a problem. So yeah, I'm just trying to figure out process, um, the look, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There's so, there's just so much I don't know. And, you know, I think for some people that's demoralizing for me, it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of ener energizing, you know, it's, yep. it, I never want to stop learning. Um, that's right. Yeah. And I, that's one thing I, I you know, I mentioned, I, I did a lot of streaming on the Adobe channel. That's one thing I really, really miss about that is that just hopping on there and just exploring with people and being able, them being able to mm -hmm. be part of my journey. You know, people, some people watching Wade knows, Bruce knows, you know, um, Uma Korn, uh, mm -hmm. I know she's been on here before, um, when watch mm -hmm. me do it and just being able to watch me experiment, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and fail experiment yeah. and fail and, and pick myself <laughs> up and, Keep yeah. going, you know. That's right. It's that's part of the learning process. That's right, and that's part of that patience and practice. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. right. Big ups to Anik, Anika, Uma, Corn, Becca, Way, D, Steve, Bruce. Everybody's still hanging out. Daryl Flicking, how you doing? Uh, D has a suggestion to try out Kyle's manga. It's smooth, smooth. It's really nice for inking. So Kyle's manga inker is uh another brush that you want to check out i i'm gonna prefer, check it out yes thank you uh go for it uh, i check i always use whatever photoshop already has and then i try to download as much as many releases of kyle t webster's ink brushes as there are just so i can experiment and try it out and see how it works but i'm mostly work with fresco so it's oh. uh, i have i have my basic uh, inks and uh, brushes that I use all the time, but that is a great suggestion right there by D. Thank you, D. And you, Bruce and oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you: Do you ever get overwhelmed at at new brushes, or do you do you? Yeah, I get that. That yeah, you do. That's yes. how I feel. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's it's a the mega pack is hundreds of uh, brushes, Oof. and uh, <laughs> so what I do is uh like I know anytime I start a new project and I want to experiment with the brushes, I do pull them out and start grabbing them and clicking and uh and testing and when I find a brush or two I like I make a note on the drawing of what brush I'm using and uh, and then try to create the favorites list so that mm. I then only have a small tab with a few brushes and not that long list because yes it's a lot and I'm pretty sure somebody needs one of those brushes but uh right. it's uh, <laughs> there's a whole lot of somebody's <laughs> there's a whole lot of somebody's exactly are you yeah. that somebody i don't yeah exactly it's a question <laughs> yeah it's a it's so so i'm pretty sure there's a use for him and all uh but but yeah and i'm i'm my drawing passion and inspiration comes from uh, comics so line work line work line work are the main thing that i do with my drawings and so having that right brush that's going to give me the lines i want is uh it's always uh, a battle because you want to try different things you know that's interesting that that comics were your thing because i don't associate fresco fresco with um with mm -hmm. comics naturally yeah. i guess maybe that's right. my, my mistake well and it's not for making comics but you can but because i am my style is very much comic like mm -hmm. then then it includes line work and i'm a vector artist uh first mm, okay and uh when it comes to digital vector traditional give me anything and i'll draw it but uh when it comes to digital is vector and so uh i bring in that paint and comic styles together when i draw my characters and so what you're doing now is exactly the my process is sit there ink it out dry it out get a feel for the pose the 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 actual arm the the hands how which way is everything going to be look mm -hmm. at that it's beautiful and uh before i even start coloring or working on the details um that's interesting <laughs> be honest does it does it drive you a little crazy to watch me fumble my way through this <laughs> no no <laughs> I want to draw too at the same time, but then I oh, won't good. be looking at the screen. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I want to draw my version of quiet. I love that that body style, a big head, little body. 
Yes, I yeah. think that's super cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely, it was funny. I think I really think I was looking at my little three-year-old, she's three, three years now at the time. She mm -hmm. was, you know, one, um, if, if that. And I remember just, but looking at her, watching her walk around, I was like, that is such a cute, like, shape, just a little mm -hmm. cute, you know, like, mm -hmm. and so, and it's funny. And, you know, so I'm, you know, I think that the, the prevailing character design wisdom would say, you know, give him really big eyes, like, you know, mm -hmm. big chibi eyes and all that stuff. And I've, I've been kind of trying to, trying to not quite go that direction. You know, I'm trying to keep it um, my mm -hmm. own look enough, but you know, I have the big forehead that kind of, if you look at the sketch over here, it kind of bulges yes. forward. Yep. Um, and then you got the tummy that just like mm -hmm. really comes out, you know, and just, yep. and, and define and that, that right uh -huh. there, I think that psychologically tells people like, protect this little thing like this that's is, right this is a yeah. precious little thing it is not fully grown it's cute mm -hmm. um and yeah. so i think those are the things that you got to kind of you know if you want to create a character that that strikes certain chords in people i think you got to sometimes speak languages um uh, with, with shapes and that kind of thing and so mm -hmm. that's definitely where shape language comes in for this for today's stream is with him and with uh horns the antagonist trying to come up with more aggressive shapes for him and and just you know, tell a lot of story that way. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, it's soft and cuddly. That's what you get out of that. It's like, oh, it's so cute. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> mm -hmm. before I ask you a question, I'm going to make a note of what's been said in the chat. Uh, Becca and Bruce said they noticed that you have the navigator window open. Yes. Um, I don't see you reaching over for it, but uh, why, why are you using the navigator window? So I usually use a navigator window. You're right. I'm not actually using it hardly at all today um, because mm -hmm. I'm focusing right now on the line work. But um, any piece of art that you do, um, in my mind, it has to look good from a distance. Um, mm -hmm. and I think this also especially comes from me working on details so much in my work because uh, it's really easy. You know, as your audience knows, it's really easy to get caught up in the details of a thing. Mm -hmm. And um, what you forget is that most people, when they look at a piece of art, take in all the information almost immediately. You know, they, mm -hmm. they don't, and they don't mm -hmm. actually spend that much time waiting around to look at all the details unless they really liked what mm -hmm. hit them in the first two seconds. Uh -huh. And so for me, even though I'm not using it much at the moment, having that navigator window open allows me to really quickly glance over and see what this whole thing looks like as a whole. You know, if I almost, you know, it's almost like the Instagram test. If I'm on Instagram and I'm scrolling through all these tiny little pictures, mm. which of those tiny little pictures are going to, is going to pop out at me because it's not going to be the best pieces of art. Mm -hmm. It's going to be just the catchiest pieces of art. Right. Um, and so, you know, there's other pieces that may be really super detailed. You know, I've had, uh, pieces that I've done that uh, I legitimately thought were the best pieces of artwork I've ever done. And they just fail on social media, you know, <laughs> yeah. like they just, they just, they just belly flop mm -hmm. because so much of what made them interesting um, and engaging, at least in my mind was the detail and the story going on in the, in the little things. Mm -hmm. um, but people weren't looking at that, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. they were looking at the the whole thing and as a whole, you know, it, it held together. Um, but it didn't have quite that same impact. You know, I think it's the difference between like a really good song that you listen to for year after year after year versus mm -hmm. the pop single on the radio that like you listen to it once and that, that, that hook is in your head all day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, whether or yeah. not you want it. Um, mm -hmm. so, um, that's true. So that thumbnail is like that hook, it just grabs you. And so you want to make sure you're the piece still interesting. The composition is there. We got Goldman vision on youtube uh saying navigator window is essential you have to see the thumbnail while you work and then that's the instagram test yep yep oh. details do not engage in a thumbnail or in 2.5 seconds of a scroll and that's so that so i get it i get it that's true and that and sometimes as artists we sit down and focus on a little piece and, and we draw that piece really really great like that piece of the drawing of a of a character and then you step back it's like dang that arm was crooked the whole time Yes, exactly. All the time. Oh my gosh. All the time. No one told time. me. And this is why I've, this is why I've just started getting into line work. Uh, as per Be Becca's question, was just like I realized too often that I'd be I, I'd draw something and, I, and it would be almost there, but there was just this compositional mess up that I just mm -hmm. 
I couldn't rectify later on down the line. And yeah. so, um, yeah, that's kind of very good. Yeah, that's that's the answer. Well, there you go. That's your answer, everybody. Great reason to have the navigator window open. The day I started to use the space bar and keyboard shortcuts to zoom in and out and panning and zoom in is the day I stopped using the navigator window. But now that I think about it, I think that's a good idea. But I do a lot of the zoom in and out. Zoom out to look at what I'm doing. Zoom back in, get to work, and, and so on. So I get it. Yeah. As mm -hmm. long as you're doing it. As long as you're taking the time, you know, to mm -hmm. look back. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so big ups to everybody still joining us in the chat. We got, uh, uh, I do want to let y'all know that if you're tuning in on YouTube or Behance, remember to subscribe and like the video. Please leave a comment, question, or suggestion so that we know you are there. If you're watching and you don't say nothing, we don't know and uh, who you are. So when you leave a comment, we see your name and we get used to seeing the cool folks stopping through. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our new Adobe Live channel on YouTube to stay up to date on the latest streams, participate in the Adobe Live community and so much more. Subscribe to the Adobe YouTube channel, Adobe Live YouTube. Big ups to Sean, Steve, Umar Korn, Daryl, everybody leaving cool comments. Appreciate you. Wade, Bruce. Thank you. Uh, Bruce did say that you can uh, drag brushes um, into and, and make your own little library so you can save them later and come back to it. So uh, and then Becca says, I didn't know that libraries took in brushes. So, yes, there's a way to keep track of the things that you like to do, uh, that you the tools that you like to use more often. So once once you find that style it, that fits that brush, you 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 got a winning combination and you don't want to lose it absolutely you need to find and you need to find it when you need to find it you need to find it now that's right you need you know, now. Like, yeah <laughs> yes yes and thank you terry for the link to jonah's new book i need to save a little bit of my amazon money to get it myself <laughs> um uh yeah it's like oh i get it right now i got a little credit like yeah that credit is not enough <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah they did they did they did a beautiful job printing it but the, mm -hmm. the, definitely you see it in the cost like oh mm -hmm. oh, oh okay mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. but it's big i spent i put a lot of effort into it over a year and a half it's 230 pages put 230 Ooh. pages long wow it's um yeah i've never done anything yeah. like that before it was a nice nice yeah one, one day you and i will get into the art business conversation so we can uh, know more about the business side of something like that in the meantime, we do have a question from uh, on YouTube by Goldman Vision. What do you use more often, undo or the eraser? Ooh, um, probably, probably undo, mm -hmm. um, or I'll often step back, like just manually, like you know, over mm -hmm. here, just step back okay. to where I need to, um, just because you know. I, I often, I can often see the moment I put down a bad line, I'm like, oh, that ain't right. <laughs> and so I just take it back mm -hmm. a step. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I try not to be too scared of just erasing too. I think that um, working on the Adobe channel and working on pen and ink both have helped me um, uh, think really hard about, uh, you know, the mistakes that I'm willing to live with mm -hmm. versus the mistakes that I... Um, mm -hmm that I, that I, that I want to, I want to change right off the bat. So, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm just trying to decide if I want that all black or not. I think I do. I think for simplicity's sake, I do. Um, as you can see, there's a couple, there's, I have some competing aspects of this image here, of this, of this inking. I think that not everything I really, I know that when I physically ink, I really like to do these little kind of lines, you know, mm -hmm. just little, just kind of textural kind of things. Mm -hmm. Um, but in some respects, in some respects, that's at odds with my kind of cartooning simplicity. So, again, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to find my own language, you know, and, mm -hmm. and figure out what what works and what you know what comes naturally to me mm -hmm. um, versus what can I teach myself to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and this, you know, like this, like this rib cage is not a real rib cage. It doesn't like really work exactly how ribs work. It kind of does, mm -hmm. but it kind of doesn't. You know, like mm -hmm. in real words, it, real rib cage, you'd have. A hard sternum here mm -hmm. the collarbones would be like this mm -hmm. uh, and then you'd have all these ribs kind of come up you know like that yeah in there but mm -hmm. it's just too much it's it's a little yeah. you know it almost reminds you too much that he's a skeleton mm -hmm. so it's almost like i'm trying to come up with a skeleton suit you know mm -hmm. you know what right. is what is obviously a skeleton from the get-go but is still its own thing um 
So yeah, nice. you, you, you're on, you're with me on this journey. I don't, you know, I know. <laughs> We're going to figure it out together. <laughs> We're here. We're here together. Yeah. Thank you, everybody who's who's, who's joining me and, and joining us. And and any any thoughts, any feedback you have, you know, I want to, I always want to hear it because, nice. you know, it's, it's, it's like um, product testing. Yeah. You know, here's, here's my products. Do, do mm-hmm. you like it? If not, mm-hmm. or, or if you have a suggestion, you know, I think mm-hmm. people who, who, who join me on, on my, on my own streams, um, they're used to me just, I just, field suggestions all the time mm-hmm. you know all the time yeah that's what's great about streaming our our work in progress either behance or youtube is that um you get into the conversation in the chat and and then those who are watching are supporting of your journey and give insight to things that you hadn't thought about but until you show them what you're working on there's no feedback to be given so yeah. we have to be very open about our progress just so that we can all learn together from it. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, it, when it comes to the quiet, uh, this this um, new world I'm diving into, you know, it's such a free for all at this point that people give me ideas all the time that I use, you know, um, mm-hmm. I have, you know, he as a, as a character, he can't speak, but there's a little character that I'm going to be including in the book uh, who's a... A, a little caterpillar and he's the narrator um mm. but only <sighs> oh. yeah isn't that fun but only when quiet finds him does the book start to narrate you know so wow. until then until then we're just watching him going about his world you know this guy is going around you know talking to himself and mm. and you know all that stuff but he, when he goes around no he can't make a sound um but then the moment he finds his little caterpillar the mm-hmm. caterpillar starts telling the story of him mm-hmm. as we go, mm-hmm. um, and but I'm thinking, all right, like, well, how does he, how does the caterpillar roll with him? Like, does mm-hmm. he like? Someone was like, oh, he should stay in, in his in his skull and come out of his eye socket. I was like, that's cool, <laughs> it's a, but it, it's it's a little gross, you know, it's a little yeah. gross. <laughs> Somebody else was saying, like, you know, tuck up, tuck him, tuck him up in the rib cage, and that that's a bit mm-hmm. better. That feels a little mm-hmm. bit more like a pocket. Yeah. Um, but then someone was saying, you know, what if he's like a scarf? You know, he just like he just, you know, he's all the time there, and he's, then he you know comes out and you uh-huh. know like that. You know, oh, that's um, cool. It's yeah. cute, right? It's yeah. a cute idea. Mm-hmm. Um, but someone on stream just like gave me that idea, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna look into that. So yeah. somebody mentioned uh, shirt and tie uh, earlier. I didn't mention this, but like, at given the situation, the caterpillar would fit a different thing. So if he wants to look proper and distinguished, <laughs> then it's a tie. The and then. When he's cold or, you know, it's like uh, it's supposed to the scene is supposed to evoke uh, this coldness then around the neck. That's so cute. I love oh that. Oh, my gosh. That's see, crazy. And that's exactly this is the kind of thing I wouldn't think of myself, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, wow, free, fantastic ideas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Adobe audience. There you go. Uh, Way says, oh, I like all of those ideas. And there it is. We're going to you leave it up to the chat and we will give you plenty of work to do. I love it. I love it. But this is literally why I stream. You know, mm-hmm. this is like literally, this is literally, this is the reason. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah Thank that. you, everybody. Yeah. It's real easy for artists to get stuck uh, working on their own and then uh, sharing with the world what they worked on for a long time and uh, and don't get that feedback that you thought you were going to hear um, because they can see things that you could have worked on if you had shown it way before you finished yep. you you know so that's uh that's great um there is our couple questions um and steve says yeah i like how schultz puts a scarf on snoopy when he was pretending to be the world war ii flying ace yeah <clears throat> that's very iconic look yes very cool something about the sketch underneath uh says bruce davis says the true journey was the tiny skeletons we made along the way yes Aww. yeah <laughs> that's so wise <laughs> right right <laughs> daryl says that shadow from the head is like a mouth very cool and there were some other comments about your line weights one somebody said that um the the thickness of some parts of the line gives that gives your eye that sense that there that is a shadow or the mm-hmm. bottom part and uh so that's something that uh, i know uh it, it inkers think about but there is a question from goldman vision on youtube says was there a transitional period between using a pen and paper to digital tablet 
My uncle, an indie comic artist, has great difficulty on smooth tablets. All yeah. right. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, there was some difficulty. I you, you, I recommend to your uncle um, to buy one of those um, screen mat protect mat protectors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what I use on mine, and basically it it both protects the screen from scratches, but it also makes the screen feel more like a mat surface, like so, it, like feels more like a pencil kind of. Mm -hmm. um, rather than you're drawing on glass and it does affect the process and it does affect like how much how you feel the paper you know mm -hmm. um feel the surface of a thing and so yeah there's certainly there's multiple ways which you have to adjust yourself when you're moving um from one medium to another and i think mm -hmm. i think um digital always it seems to be approaching a really good place in terms of feeling more and more like paper but i think it still has mm -hmm. a ways to go and maybe you know might not ultimately ever get there because you know, just the way that even just ink disperses across a page um, is very different, you know, mm -hmm. digitally versus traditional. But yeah, it's it's always a, it's always a, it's always a bit of a, a journey for sure. Yeah, it's an adjustment, you know, just going from pencils to pens, from smooth paper to rough paper, cold press paper. There is uh, there is always going to be a bit of a, of a, a learning curve when you move from one medium to the next and when you go to digital it's uh it's it's, it's almost like um uh, drawing in the air because uh the the pen tip can be a little too hard the glass can be a little bit too hard and just two hard surfaces scratching against each other <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it's like it's like scrabbling around on a glass surface you know mm -hmm. like right <laughs> literally <laughs> yeah yeah literally that's right literally yeah so yeah it's uh takes some time but yeah i like those uh screen protectors i used to use them after a while i got used to the apple pencil or the surface pen yeah and uh and so now i just leave the glass in um with uh just bare and uh but i do have also cintiq and a hue one and whichever one i hop on there's a little adjustment in the beginning but I'm so used to them now that you switch up the way you you draw, you sketch, your pressure, the way you hold the pencil, all of those things. Are you um are you enjoying the Huon, by the way? May I ask? Uh I will say yes. Um, but it's a backup device that I only grab when I need to. Okay. And uh and it's smallish. I have a Cintiq. You're talking about old devices. I have a a 10 year old Cintiq is more than 10 years old, but I've only mm. had it for a few years. It was already used and abandoned before by the time I got it. Um, but the it's a but it's a 21 inch Wacom Cintiq, and so that's so buttery smooth, it's beautiful. And um, and then going to the Hue one, the way the tips are, they're hard, and I like soft tips, mm. and uh, so so it's been a little bit of adjustment how um on how much pressure you push into the tablet into the glass and also how hard you hold the pen in your fingers and it's important to take care of your fingers and your hands when you're drawing for long periods of time because the yes, last thing is. you need is achy hands uh <laughs> then yeah yeah they're not uh, they're not fun and so uh so i i wish there was i could find a tip that was softer than the hard tip that i have now on the q1 but it's also an older q1 so i don't have anything new um I'm, i have a uh, surface studio first generation surface studio 27 inch screen beautiful and i use a uh, surface pens to draw on it but the surface pen does have a soft tip version so you know it's um it has more drag when you're drawing and so you don't have to squeeze the the the, the pen so hard to make sure you have full control that's uh, interesting yeah yeah i am a bit of a hoarder but they're they're all older yeah. devices <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you just mm. pulled out a whole bunch more <laughs> more devices yeah. than i thought you had but uh -huh. that's that's great no that that's but then that means you're the person i want to talk to about this mm -hmm. because you know um, yes yeah i'm yes. just like i'm just holding my nose and embracing myself for the purchase mm -hmm. of my next thing because mm -hmm. i was like wow if, if the adobe tech tech guy is telling me that <laughs> you know that it's, it's hard. 
it's, yes, it's hard. It's hard to see that look of pity on the on the on the tech guy's face to be like, yeah. oof, yeah, yeah. It's hard, yeah. hard to hold my head up straight. Yes, yes. The uh, oh, go man says, uh, I don't skateboard anymore because I need my hands intact. Yes, take care of your hands. Oh yeah, you have to take care of your hands. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, newer devices have uh, more a range of tips and 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 stylus so if you buy new you know three thousand dollars for a wacom four thousand dollars just the just the the tablet the display tablet versus five hundred dollars for the hue one i don't know take a chance on the hue one yeah (laughs) yeah And uh, D says, I, I love I love both my Hue ones, but I have never used anything else to compare to. So, yeah, mm. there is. Uh, that's the thing, too. We're back when, you know, the Microsoft store was around. I would hang out at the Microsoft store and uh, use their devices. You get to be friends with the associates. You bring them stickers. You tell them you're an artist and they all want to hang out with you because you're sitting there drawing on their devices. And that's cool. Uh, nowadays, I don't know, I guess Best Buy or uh, some other store that has electronics in your town is another place to just try out all the different types of devices. But not too many stores are into devices for artists. No, that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. That's why I rely on other artists exclusively mm-hmm. for, for, <laughs> for this feedback. That's why I'm asking right. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, go ahead. I was just gonna say I'm thinking uh, someone someone commented about line work, uh, line weight and how that kind of creates shadows or, or the perception mm-hmm. of shadows. And I'm, mm-hmm. I just want them to I just want to articulate that that's that's what I'm thinking of actually as we speak as they said as you said that I was like yep I need to mm-hmm. I need to take a couple minutes to like maybe go through and just you know so in some instances like uh, where it's hitting the light I might you know almost almost erase the line mm-hmm. yes like that you know. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. But again, this is it's like it's like learning a language kind of, you know, like mm-hmm. where do I where do I put the emphasis? How do I conjugate mm-hmm. lines? You know, um, what is the past tense of a line? I don't know. You know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, and it, it gives that sense of dynamic uh, uh, um, movement, even though it's just sitting still. There's life, actually, not dynamic movement, but life. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's one thing that I, I'm I'm not digging about the pen that I'm using now, which is you know tells me I need to get a new one. Is that mm-hmm. there's not a tremendous difference in line weight versus mm-hmm. pressure, you know. And so part of that is my old Cintiq. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is just the the brush I'm using. Yeah. Um. And so, but that's a big part of of this process, and I'm very aware of it. But I want and I want to just flag it mm-hmm. right now because I, it's it's where my mind's at. So yeah. good good feedback, everyone. Yes, thank you all. Uh, my feedback to you is leave the little dots and scratches. It adds. Yeah. Yes, it, it, I love, uh, you know, I have tons of skulls. I collect them, but they're plastic and plaster mm. skulls. Okay, no, no, no real human skulls. That's gross. <laughs> always got to always gotta say that on stream for the record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no people were harmed in the making of these skulls. <laughs> but I always like how um, the, 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 they can make some plaster and plastic skulls have that porous look mm. as as bone would. And so that's kind of the idea I get looking at your a drawing right now when it has all these little dots in and dings Good. and dents. Yes. That's yeah. very helpful advice. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Uh let's see. That tech meeting is hunting Jonas says Wade. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> and he was trying to be so nice about it. He was trying to be, he was like, Oh, that's that's what you have, huh? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's okay. How old is that you said? Oh, like okay, okay. okay. You're like Thank thanks. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, if it works, listen. If it works and it does the job, it's a work. Yeah, exactly. And it's a workhorse. Then do it. Yes, yes. L- like like I said, I I have a lot of devices, but none of them that I buy new. Okay, so you don't mm. have to have the latest and greatest, even though it's no, shiny and pretty. And, you know, I do lust after material things myself. It's uh, but but to get the job done, you got to be able to um, find the tools, no matter how old they are, as long as they do the work in. Uh, and so, you know, don't don't Absolutely. chase it. Yes, I totally agree. I totally agree. All right. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 call this. Let's call him done for now. I'm just gonna okay. move up here, and then we're gonna do. Um, and actually, he's he's smaller compared to Horn, so I'm gonna bring him 
Yeah, Ooh. he's like, he's he's little, mm-hmm. big, and it, this actually might make him. He might he might be. You see, there's something about this. Um, you know, we were talking about line work versus sketches, and you know, I the ske- there's something dynamic about sketches because you're very loose with the line work. You know, mm-hmm. you're very um, gestural, and then when you start starting with the inks, things start to become a little bit more rigid, a little bit more brittle looking. Sometimes, if you're not doing it right, which is I generally don't do it right, <laughs> um, but I'm looking at, for instance, the, you know, his posture here and the really the bigness of his belly, et cetera. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. to myself, I'm kind of losing that a little bit here. So, you know, it, it, it is what it is. It's no big deal. Um, right. I, you know, like, I, you know, I'm trying to figure this out in real time with you guys, but I think a quick liquefy, which is one of my favorite things to use, mm-hmm. would help to um, maybe bring a little there bit of this go. back. So I'll just, mm-hmm. I'll fatten up a little bit of the leg and foot. Yes, yes. And really, and get those hips, you know, get the hips bigger. Um, and I think that could help. I could do a little something. So Nice, nice. Uh, that's uh, Goldman Vision did mention that. He saw that uh, great use of the liquefy tool. Very nice. I love a good type of tool. I mean, mm-hmm. it is, it is, I use it all the time. Anyone who watches mm-hmm. my streams can attest. I use it all the time. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's without having to redraw things, you can just push mm-hmm. and pull things into position. Mm-hmm. Let's see if that works. That's a bit, yeah, that's go. a bit better, right? That looks, mm-hmm. that looks a little cuter. That's so, right. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. All right. So let's, should we start in with, uh, with this guy? Let's, let's do it. I think it's time. Yes, this time. And uh, and yes, thank you, Bruce, for bringing back the question because I saw it and I was going to ask it, but I was uh, waiting for the right time to switch gears. Um, when Bruce is asking, when you're working or drawing on quiet, do you have an outline or script as it is a scene or is it just that it's a scene that hits you? At the moment... I don't have much of an outline. Um, I mean, no, that's not true. I'm sorry. I do have an outline. I don't have uh, an agenda when I do a particular piece of art. And so I think that's kind of like a critical um, component because I haven't yet. I, I'm actually almost not allowing myself to go mm-hmm. there yet because um, I don't want to become too attached to any one piece of the story um, yet because things could are, are subject, subject to change. So a lot of what I'm doing is I'm drawing these characters um, kind of the way I want to see them mm-hmm. or in the predicaments that I, I want to see them. So, you know, I think last week I did a stream where I showed this antagonist just tossing quite into the air gently, like you would toss a kid. It, and that would never happen in the comics, but it's a mm-hmm. fun, cute little moment. And mm-hmm. I got to show him being a bit more jovial and I got to show quiet kind of flopping through the air like a cute <laughs> big baby. And I thought to myself, yeah, I like that. You know, yeah. it's, it's just, and so it, you know, it's the kind of th- circumstance where if you draw it, it looks cool, it works. Mm-hmm. You start to be like, well, now I can maneuver the story around that moment, maybe, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, on a DJ Adobe stream um, before I did this, um, um, this is Adobe Live. Um, I did this image here um, of Quiet. And this is this is about a year ago. Uh, sorry, it's loading up. Give it a second. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know if I'll be using this particular um scene again it's taking forever oh sure oh okay. there we go Boom. And, oh uh, yes uh that's the, that was in the post uh that was, that was the, the, the thumbnail post uh-huh yes. exactly uh-huh. and so uh-huh. it's, it's just like this these these you know him adventurous little little worlds mm-hmm. you know him him walking around uh through this water and kind of being accosted by all these different characters uh-huh. all these all this you know i thought of it as like a hydra basically uh-huh. um Will it be in the story? I don't know, but I got to tell you, I really what I what I want is I want this character. You know, he, he's always small, he's always outmatched, but he'll, he'll he you know you know if with you rooting for him, he can get he can get through it. So this was an example of basically mm-hmm. just me doing something that just I just wanted to do. I was like, this could be a this could be a cool moment in the story, mm-hmm. and so I will I will render this out and. And if it if it looks good, if it appeals to me, I will totally make sure that at some point he ends up with a torch, you know, mm-hmm. in a watery area, and then this thing. Comes, <laughs> and then I have to figure out. Well, then how is he also going to get out? I don't know. Yeah, no, yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Everybody in the chat is loving it, uh, loving this uh, drawing. And uh, Goldman Vision says it's a very powerful image. And you. Um, Bruce, you saw the finished version of that one. Very cool. And Wade says, I remember Jonah working on this. 
fun times. Love to see you, Steve. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. This was also another piece I did um, <gasps> wow. on Adobe. Uh -huh. And so this was basically just like, you know, what what might a cover look like? You know, what's, the, what's the aesthetic? So this was, again, I didn't quite know what horns looks like. Now, horns, you know, in this one, he's, you know, he's a box. You know, he's just a square. And he's just like so big. And um, and there's quiet, you know, very little, you know, maybe with probably rendered in more detail than I would actually mm -hmm. do him. But I was just trying to figure out, like, what is this? What is this world? What do people look like? You know, mm -hmm. all these things. So, um, yeah, there's another composition based on that. So, again, nice. going with a sense of like just by virtue of looking at them, like how could he possibly ever defeat the bad guy? You mm -hmm. know, but people love an underdog. So they sure do. That's right. Especially when they're cute. But I, I, they're cute. <laughs> And I like how you you understand anatomy enough to have the the shape of the head, the way it's looking up to horns, and the angle. Look at that head. If you if you know how to the shape of your skull is, when you draw it, you can tell that he's looking up. That the angle of the head is looking up. It is uh, a straight diagonal line, and um, and, and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Yes. And then the body and like, he's not backing down. <laughs> nope. Not backing down. Not backing down. It's funny. Uh, well, I, I had, I had um, started off this sketch by basically figuring out um, these are different. Um, <laughs> these are different like scenes in the, uh -huh. in quiet's development and in the story, et cetera. But I had started off um, this. Let's, let's see if I have this um, lying around. Um, the whole idea, if I still have this layer, um, you got a sketch in there. Uh-huh. Here we go. Uh, was like this. Mm -hmm. okay. So essentially, right. you have, you have two shapes mm -hmm. and one is a rectangle going this way mm -hmm. and the other is a much smaller rectangle going this way. And mm -hmm. that gives you the, the illusion. If I, if I were to complete those shapes, they'd be like this, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um the illusion that they're circling each other they're going mm -hmm. around each other and That's it creates right. it creates an essential balance so you look at you look at those two shapes there and you look at this and there it is and you see there's the, the one is sliding one way one is sliding the other way they're mm -hmm. circling you know That's right yeah um <laughs> they're waiting yeah. for their moment to attack oh. <laughs> wow yes goldman says uh very powerful images uh image filmmakers use photog photographs of locations and people the same way Eventually, this will be a story and love the just the juxtaposition here, not just the size, but the concept of who is good and who is possibly evil. Very nice. Thanks, Very guys. Yeah. And uh, Anthony says, I learned anatomy in high school and it helped my art in the long run. How did you learn anatomy, Jonah? We, we keep asking Jonah questions and I'm sorry, Jonah. We're keeping you from drawing every no, time. No, not at all. I love it. I love it. That's why I'm here. Absolutely. Okay. Um, how did I learn anatomy? Um, I have always loved figure drawing. Um, always. It's just a thing. I just, I just am, am, am people, the human body is amazing to me. Um, I think I really started digging in, you know, so I, so I, I took as many figure drawing classes as I could, as I could in college, which is, mm -hmm. was actually not that many. Um, uh, unfortunately for me. Um, but I spent a lot of time uh, uh, after a certain point working at Bethesda, uh, uh, you know, at, at, in my game, in my game career, I did a lot of blending of human and animal anatomy to create mm -hmm. monsters. Mm -hmm. So that made me focus a lot closer on, um, on humans and start collecting images and pictures. And if you can see on my camera back here, I have some, um, mm -hmm. maybe I'll just focus in there. I have yeah. some human figures, that kind of thing, um, mm -hmm. that I've been looking at. I've had those since my Bethesda days. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yes. Thank you, uh, Francisco. So there, there, there they are. I've got a lot of books on human anatomy um, that help a lot. I have even like little miniatures, like this little skull um, mm -hmm. that just, just gives me a sense of, of how these things work, how things fit together. Mm -hmm. So that's all helped a lot. And then... Um, uh towards the end of my my career at bethesda when i was really looking forward to leaving and thinking about the next steps and wanting to get good at, at at 2d art um i started doing um uh just a lot more like drawing of naked people on the internet you know just like looking 
scouring the internet for mm-hmm. pictures of naked mm-hmm. men, naked women, mm-hmm. naked everybody, and just drawing mm-hmm. them, mm-hmm. and you know, do it quickly, uh, do it mm-hmm. over over the course of time, and and kind of it's kind of just one of those things where every time you know we learn something new, um, or a new trick or what have you, you know, we really only tend to retain, you know, five percent of what we whatever we just did. So repetition is key. You know, just mm-hmm. doing it again and again mm-hmm. and again mm-hmm. and. I think for me, a big moment in my career was um, right near the end of Bethesda when I, I decided to leave and I was going to come to New York, et cetera. And um, in that last year, um, I bought a sketch pad. It was just a cheap sketch pad. And I made the vow to myself mm-hmm. that I would just sketch, sketch, sketch. And I wouldn't like really let anyone see anything in there and that mm-hmm. I wouldn't be compelled to make the things that were in there good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so once I actually let go of, um, <clears throat> the feeling like my sketch pads had to have good art in them, mm-hmm. it, it helped a lot because then I really let go mm-hmm. of, um, worrying what people would, 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 would say. Mm-hmm. And the moment I started just sketching a lot more anatomy, et cetera, uh, from pictures, uh, knowing that I wasn't going to let myself be judged by anybody for them Mm -hmm. i started getting a lot better because because i started doing more you know once i lost the fear Mm -hmm. of being judged for making bad art i just made a lot more bad art and (laughs) and then what happened is that my good art got better you know yes um so yeah to anybody who's looking to improve any given skill dive in and don't just forgive yourself for not making art that is great Give yourself express permission, and in mm-hmm. fact, give yourself a directive. I'm going to sit down right now, and I'm going to make some bad art. You know, mm-hmm. it sounds like a joke, but just putting pencil down to the page is one of the hardest parts about making art and just starting to make art. You know, what's the hardest part about going to the gym? It's walking out the door. You know, that's showing that's, up. That's it. Just showing up. And so, for me, uh, developing a practice where I could just show up and not have to worry about what I did while at the art art gym. That gave me the permission and the space and the artistic room to um, start exploring with less and less fear. So yeah, that was that's the long answer to the question of, of how I got good at anatomy. I basically, there's a lot of confluences <laughs> in my career that led me along this path. And then I decided to focus on this. And um, and then ultimately it was it was the not letting things not letting failure get to me, which is what really freed me, I think. There you go. Dang. All right, y'all. That There's the answers. The answers are here. And come back and watch this video. Get it in your head. Um, the Wade is, uh, Steve is asking, uh, you have some animal. Oh, no. I think he was asking Wade about animal skulls. Do you have any animal skulls? Donna? I have a couple. Yeah, I have okay. a couple. I have okay. um, an alligator skull and like a... Like a <laughs> I think like a fox skull or something. Mm. I have a a, mm-hmm. a, a a tiny little monkey skull. Yeah. Um, I I have a human skull replica that one of my uh, followers sent me, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. And um, in storage, I don't have it now, which is really unfortunate. But I have a I did order one of those like um, replica saber tooth tiger skulls. <gasps> wow. Yeah, I know. I'm really nice. I'm really missing that. I wish I could get out of, get it out of storage, mm-hmm. but yeah. Yeah, I'll stop by and pick it up. Yeah. There or, you go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Becca says, I need one of those little skulls with the moving jaw. I have one. I have tons of skulls, and I got a little one, and uh, he moves his jaw. It's got a little spring on it, um, and the top pops off. The top of the head pops off. Ooh. And those are really cool. You know, I I, I got to gotta have those references around yeah. always, always. And, you know, uh, that's what uh, Wade also says, got to have that reference as handy. And uh, in practice, because when it's time to draw something uh, on purpose where you know at a certain particular amount of time you want to have something done, you you got to pull all that together, pull all that together. But the more you work on the bad drawings, the easier it's going to be to come into the good drawings. Yeah. You got to get the bad ones out. And Becca says, can I shout out Crokey's Cafe for a figure drawing resource? There's mm-hmm. a ton of online uh, resources for figure drawing. And uh, and here's my suggestion to anybody out there, and Jonah especially. Mm-hmm. I have a three-year-old granddaughter and a seven-year-old grandson. 
They have posed for me countless times. I have uh, nieces and nephews when they were smaller. They're teenagers now. But they were when they were in that weird body shape period, mm-hmm. that's when you tell them to hold still. Hold on. I need mm-hmm. to take a picture. Hold this pencil. Hold this sketchbook. Sit right there. You know, move your head over. <laughs> wow. I'm just impressed you got your three, your three-year-old to stand still that, that, that long. Yeah, she she well, the, it's for a picture. You gotta take oh, the picture, yeah. do you? Not, not oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get it, and maybe just roll camera because uh, you'll get the the pose while she's talking and moving all about, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, there it was. Uh, so, so, so if you videotape, you'll get that frame. Um, but yes, uh, I a few weeks ago we were outside and uh, hanging out with my grandchildren and I, and there were when my grandson was drawing with uh, chalk on the deck. And f- for some reason, he just decided to ask my granddaughter, because they're cousins, to hold the, stand there and hold the pose because he was going to draw her. And she immediately struck a pose and uh, kept trying to hold it, kept moving. And uh, and he was sitting there scribbling on the deck. And, uh, and that was his drawing session, just like that. <laughs> That's so cool. That's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. Use your children for models. Yeah, use <laughs> reference, everybody. Seriously, I think, I think, it, even as a veteran character designer, whenever I have to create any characters or whatever, you know, and I'm looking, you know, I'm thinking of like the musculature, etc. I can place it at this point by memory. I can place it by memory, but mm-hmm. I will never, I will never not pull up reference. You know, all the time mm-hmm. because, you know, I think there's like a dirty lie going around that says reference. Mm-hmm. Is cheating? It's, nah, man. Nah, it's 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 integral. Yeah, there's always details that you can see. Your eye can see. Your artistic eye can see. Yes. And transfer into your drawing when you have a reference. And so it's not it's not the same as tracing, even though tracing is allowed as part of practice. Of course. Uh, but uh, but when you use reference, it's uh, definitely you will see the difference in your drawings and your artwork. Absolutely. I think, Mm -hmm. I think as you, you mentioned the, you know, the artistic eye Mm -hmm. and basically I think we have an idea. I've given this talk so many times, uh, probably some of my followers on here are kind of like, okay, Jonah, here he goes. (laughs) But like, um, you know, we have an idea of what things look like in our head. If I say the word Mm -hmm. frog, you know, we all picture a frog and we're like, yeah, no, Mm -hmm. I get it. Like fat belly and big Mm -hmm. fat legs and, and big bulgy eyes. But if we were to draw a frog, probably wouldn't turn out very well, you know, but Mm -hmm. when you're looking at something with your eyeballs, you're paying attention to all its secondary and tertiary characteristics that you don't Mm -hmm. think about. Mm -hmm. And you realize like, oh, like they actually, you know, they're, they are this, they're not this, you know, all these things like, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't know that without looking just really, really, really looking. Mm -hmm. So, there you go. I found, um, out, I found out frogs don't have ribs last weekend. You know huh? that? What? They don't have ribs. Okay. Yeah, all that huh. we we, th- we think they're all fat and all that. No, that's just uh-huh. all their intestines in like it's just a bag. That's all uh. it is. <laughs> they don't have ribs. Like they don't have. They're, they're not like they're not like you know like like slim, but then they like just uh-huh. get really big on top. No, no, they just they're just. Yeah, hmm. I don't know. Isn't that interesting? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, that I never thought about it, but. Uh... I do remember skipping that day in biology class. Oh, like, oh yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not cutting this. I'm not doing this. <laughs> we, yeah, we never actually ended up doing that. I'm kind of glad about that. Yeah. yeah. Wade says, uh, no ribs, only rivets. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good, Wade. Uh, there you go. Wade will be here all week, everybody. Make sure you tip your server. Just, just. <laughs> Croaking jokes, croaking jokes all day. That's it. <laughs> oh, Bruce and Way say it's always good to hear the, this reinforced in the art community to have to work with references. So that's really great. If you're just now joining us, guest Jonah Loeb is an artist, game developer, and educator specializing in character art, concept art, and 3D art for games based in Brooklyn, New York. Today, he's finishing a character sketch and Adobe Photoshop. So make sure you check out his videos and live streams on Behance.net and follow the links. I've went to Jonas uh, Behance and seen all the other social media links. So go ahead and make sure you click on those also so that you can follow him in other places where he posts a variety of work. 
Yes. Yeah, please do. I, I, for anyone interested, I just released uh, about two hours ago, I released a, a, a video of my Barnes and Noble talk about Marvel Anatomy. <laughs> um, so that's up on my YouTubes. Um, so if you're interested in, in that and, and, and seeing an in-depth, in-depth discussion about how I, about my career and then my, my, my tactics for when I made this whole book and then basically mm -hmm. my process for the whole thing, it's on there. Check it out. Yes. Go check it out. There's uh, the link to YouTube. Thank you, Jonah, for the link. I mean, uh, wait for the links to YouTube, Instagram and Behance, but yes, go check it out. I have it. I see it right there. Two hours ago. That's right. You was busy. You was busy right before yeah. you went live. <laughs> Always, man. Always. Yeah. <laughs> and yet and yet constantly behind, you know. Right. <laughs> well, you know, you do have a three year old to run after, so that's gonna Oof. keep you busy. <laughs> and uh Way says, uh, I've been waiting on that one. Sweet. So there it is. Uh go check it out on the YouTube. So Becca has a question. And uh let's see. Okay, so here we go. This is uh interesting question. Can you give us some tips of what kind of work a portfolio would need if wanting to do character illustrations for game development? Ooh. Certainly, I can give um, some feedback about that. So if you're looking for um, to, to create, you know, I'm, I'm going to presume this is concept art rather than uh, 3D character uh, model because you use the word illustration. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I think um, one of the most um important characteristics of a character of a of a concept artist is the ability to create lots of different ideas um kind of on the fly and not become and too attached to any one of them you know a really beautiful um piece of concept art uh is worth a lot and yet concept art ultimately does not go into the game you know if they make an art book for the game it'll be in the art book that's nice but mm -hmm. concept art itself doesn't go into the game but the concepts do so the ideas mm -hmm. that you present and bring to the table do make mm -hmm. it into the game and so mm -hmm. a potential employer would want to see from you that you can generate you know based off of basically a, a single prompt or a single mm -hmm. idea you can generate a number of different ideas um, mm -hmm. so i would say you know, creating a character and showing off the character in the best way possible, and then creating some sheets that show you what the different variations of this character could look like. You know, here's the Arctic version. Here's the version I had where he has, you know, two swords, you know, all these different ideas where basically you're showing mm -hmm. that you are flexible, that you are creative. Um, mm -hmm. And that if they were to hire you, you would just be a wellspring of new ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think, and I think that's, that's I think that's probably one of the most important things um, there. In addition, I would say, you know, if you're doing character design work, knowledge of anatomy is integral, right? Um, yeah. You kind of kind of can't get away with with doing character design work if you're not doing uh, realistic characters themselves. Mm -hmm. um, um, trying to think of anything else that might be useful to you um, in general uh, portfolio. Um, um etiquette it's always good to just show off you know your 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 five or six best pieces of art and then mm -hmm. you leave the rest off basically mm -hmm. um yeah it, it, along the same lines as what we kind of said at the beginning is that just like with the thumbnails if it doesn't hit them immediately you know they're not going to go if the first five or six pieces of art don't hit them immediately they're not going to scroll down you know, mm. to look at the other stuff. Mm. So you kind of have that one chance. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to only do a couple pieces as long mm -hmm. as those pieces, you know, blow people away. So there I guess go. that would probably be my my, piece, my bits of feedback. But any other it, more more pointed feedback in that regard, you know, please throw my way. I'm happy to yeah. give more specific feedback. I'm going to make yeah. this a little bit more translucent just so I can see through it. And check out the website, jonalove.com. On the bio page, there is a section for interviews and talks and includes uh, links to some videos. So, you know, try to soak in as much as you want. I will add that make sure you have a Behance portfolio page. You're already on Behance right now. Uh huh. Leaving comments, chatting with other artists. That's the, one of the main steps to be in the creative industry is hang out with the creative industry. And you're doing that now. And the next step is to establish your presence by posting your work. And as time goes on, you will 
organize and reorganize and organize again your portfolio as Jonah says, to show off those things with a bigger, that will give a biggest visual impact to those who are looking at your portfolio and keep them there to then uh, take the time to get to know you and your work. But uh, it's free. Behance is free. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> no, it's really good feedback. Really, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're not pushing your work, nobody knows you exist. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's that simple. If, if you're not visible out there, then it's really hard for people to know that you are here and that you're available. So, um, yeah. You and go. you know, and it's okay if you're not so pleased with what you have out now, that's fine. Just post it. And then when you create something better, you can knock off the thing that you like least in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you're always updating mm -hmm. and all these things, you know? So, yeah. Or if you're like me, you think everything is amazing. And so everything stays <laughs> up. <laughs> and then people know you're prolific and they know, Hey, this man puts in a lot of work. You know, Yeah, he does ugly drawings and he does pretty drawings. Yeah. Which one? <laughs> Which, Which one, one would you like? <laughs> uh, but yes, I do. Uh, when I'm very, very proud of something special, it's like that's going near the top of my Behance. Like we, you can click and drag the projects around on your Behance page. So that's super awesome. Mm, very helpful to know. <laughs> I will give everybody a heads up to stay tuned and join Amy Hood from Hood Spa Design at the Typography Boot Camp. That's something I need because I'm bad with letters. Every day this week at 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and immediately following that boot camp, stick around for a new episode of Power Prompts with Cody Bear, followed by a new episode of Design to the Rescue with Paul Tranny, all here on Behance or on the YouTube channel. It's Adobe, YouTube, Adobe Live YouTube. Check it out. Man, those are, those are two names. I haven't seen them in a long time. I'm, I miss those two. Mm -hmm. Cody Bear and Paul. They're, they're always around. I'm tired yeah, of them. No, no I'm just <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, you got you got to hang out and, and be hands and uh because uh yes, it's a constant stream of folks. Good good stuff. Good stuff. Absolutely. I got to um I got to go out to Adobe headquarters a couple of years ago and I ended up um sharing a cab with Cody. It was so oh. helpful. She had such good like feedback on like what we were about to just do and all that. it was i was like oh man i was so lucky i mm -hmm. got to hang out with her that time it was really cool mm -hmm. yes thank you wade for subscribe to the adobe live youtube channel there's the link just go ahead and subscribe it's really cool i'm i happen to be there every once in a while also including uh a session in two weeks from now yes two weeks i have the vector sketch to vector uh session coming up uh on a um, Monday afternoon, we're we're cool because uh, Jonah is out here in the west in the East Coast, but Adobe is West Coast time, so everything is West Coast Pacific time, and it's like, oh, that's so early. But if you're in the East Coast, it's like, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. I got time for breakfast and yeah, to relax, and then I can tune in. <laughs> no, it's actually it's I gotta say it's very <laughs> helpful, very convenient for me. I yeah. will say, I know it's bright and early for you, but for me, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm in Atlanta, so I'm on the oh, East Coast too. Georgia. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from LA, born and raised, but uh, I live in Atlanta. So yeah, we East Coast. How do you like in um, Atlanta? I like it a lot. I've been here for over 20 years now. Oh so, wow! Yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. <laughs> what What brought you out there? I was uh, I I was fresh out of the Marine Corps, mm -hmm. and uh, I, my mother was living in Oregon. And I knew I did not want to move to Oregon. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a full-time artist, but I did not know how to do that at all. And uh, and so I thought to my, and then I had, so because in, in the military, you know, people from all over the country mm -hmm. get to me, folks. And, and so I, I know that LA and New York are big art industries. And, um, and I said to myself, ah, there's already a tons of established artists out there. I'm not feeling like, I don't feel like competing. Or trying to figure it out and since this was this was 1994 the olympics were coming to atlanta in 1996. oh wow so so everybody's talking about how how much of a big deal the olympics were and atlanta is this uh, world-class city and so i said fine let's go let's go to atlanta and i came 
and I've been growing with the city ever since. So I know a ton of people. A lot of people know me. I uh, was uh, I opened a tattoo shop in the late nineties, and oh, wow. uh, and so yeah, I got to we organized a lot of art shows and got involved with a lot of uh, uh, art events and uh, industry here in Atlanta. So uh, that I've been here, I've been stuck ever since. But having the time of my life being a full time artist. Honestly, man, I think you you chose really well. I mean, honestly, Atlanta seems like it's doing so well, just in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. as cities go, it just feels like it is a city on the up, you know, like and it has been for a while now where it's just mm -hmm. like they there's things going on and like people are moving there and like it's it's mm -hmm. just, you know, some cities just do better than others. And it feels like Atlanta is really, I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's I, been nonstop growth uh, all along since I've been here. Non to this day, there are new exactly. buildings every day. <laughs> every time you 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 uh, drive through a part of town that you haven't been to in a month, it's like, oh, there's a new building here now, and uh, it's so it's, so it's growing. But uh, but we do have a saying: uh, Atlanta's full, go back. <laughs> 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 oh man, oh man, it's it's got to that point already, huh? <laughs> Hey, what, no, it's it's plenty of room, but it's just uh, but it is uh, I, I it just is mean grown. culturally. I mean like mm -hmm. mm, no enough enough new people. Go it's, home. An, it's enough traffic. Hey, thank you so much. Enough traffic. Don't bring your car. You know. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's funny. Uh, thank you, Steve. Says in respect to Veterans Day. Yes, that was uh, last Friday. I appreciate you. My wife did post my picture of a fresh baby faced uh, U.S. Marine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I remember those days. I used to be in shape for real. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and now you're an artist. Look, right. at, look at you now. <laughs> and now I sit around drawing, making muscles, drawing muscles, just like Jonah's <laughs> doing right now. <laughs> oh, we wait with a question from YouTube by Goldman Vision. As a multifaceted artist, how do you know what work you've done to emphasize as per the job? Might be a vague question, vague answers, welcome. Um, sorry, could you repeat that one more time? So as a multifaceted artist that you are, Jonah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. how do you know what work you've done to emphasize for that particular job you're doing? And uh, and I guess it's kind of it is kind of vague, so I, I you can narrow it down however you think, but I'm guessing like when when you're uh, looking at a new project, um, and uh, how do you how do you just emphasize that part of your career to fit that project? Either I, I'm guessing as getting the the get the con contract for it, mm -hmm. or even execution of the artwork. That's interesting. Hmm. I don't have a very good answer for that. Um, mm -hmm. I am. I was in a very lucky position when I got hired at Bethesda Softworks early in my career. And it kind of changed the trajectory of my entire career. And, you know, I was just one of like a hundred people who worked on Skyrim, but I've been pushing my involvement in that for so much, so long, you know, as an independent freelancer, you have to be your own biggest, you know, um, hype man. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've just been doing that. I've been doing that for years. And so at least when it comes to the game design work, I almost don't have to show anything. I'm like, I, I don't know. Have you played Skyrim? Do you want me to do something like that? Like, and that's kind of a short answer. You know, it's a cocky way to do it, but it's like I, I can rest on my laurels in that department. When it comes to concept art and illustration, I have to prove myself a lot more. Um, so what I do with my portfolio is I arrange it. So like, here's the 3D area and here's the whatever. And and I make it easy so that, you know, you just you just go to my art station and oh, boop, oh there's some 3D, there's mm -hmm. some 2D. Oh, that's cool. I see mm -hmm. immediately one image, like what he can do. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would say that in, in, in some ways, actually, I do think I'm unqualified to answer that because, <laughs> because no, really, because because I'm not, I think, being... Because you're rich and famous already. Everybody knows you. They're like, come on in. Give him a bag of money. Give Jonah a bag of money. No. Well, I would listen. I, I really wish I really wish I was rich and famous really, really badly. I could use way more money than I have now. There you um, go. <laughs> rent in New York is steep, y'all. It is steep. Mm -hmm. Um no, but but having my name attached to big projects, yes, in yeah, the past yeah. mm -hmm. helps me a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, 
in that regard, I'm not like most artists. And that's why I kind of feel like I am not qualified to answer this mm -hmm. question about, because I don't have to, I don't tend to go looking for jobs. Um, I'm either broke or a job finds me. And that's yeah. kind of like my, my two <laughs> right. states of being like, I'm broke and happy doing my own thing. <laughs> <laughs> or I'm earning a little bit of money from like literally whoever walks in my front door and they're like, Hey, can you do this thing real quick? And I'm like, yes. And then yes, they, yeah. that's, so it's, it's not a very efficient work style. Um, and it means I'm not getting on big projects for the most part. It's, it means I'm actually in some respects, I am left in the, in the dust. Yeah. This Marvel anatomy book was the exception because, you know, like they found me for this through my social media, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And I started doing it, but in general, um, I don't hustle for, 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 for jobs the way I used to. And so I don't have to tailor my portfolio just mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also put, I've also put a great deal of emphasis on my social media presence. Yes. Such that yes. most yes. people who'd want to hire me would just know, like know me um, mm -hmm. through that. And so mm -hmm. that's, and that's not just like a happy circumstance of my life. That's just been like, that's been the last 10 years grueling. Yes. All the time. And social media is like, we have this great, myth of it is like oh you know you work hard you work hard and then when do you get that viral tweet and you get a million followers in a day and it's like that hasn't happened to me yet you know that that's <laughs> literally i'm just sweating yeah. and bleeding yeah. for every single follower mm -hmm. but over the course of 10 years i'm i'm large enough now and visible enough now that um i don't have to work too hard mm -hmm. to um to gain uh uh to to be considered for a role right that's just so that's just me that's just it's just luck and it's time and it's just like and me and it's me being very concerted about putting myself out there you know when i worked at bethesda bethesda did not want any artist posting their work on social media or any of that stuff and for right, art, right to be to be an artist at bethesda then was very frustrating because it's like wow you guys are not you know and this is you know bethesda was a great place to work for you know all these things but they, they were not putting any emphasis on bigging the individuals up and and mm -hmm. spreading the myth of them and so mm -hmm. i basically the moment i left it just became like a 10-year crusade mm -hmm. to just mm -hmm. attach my name as much as possible to this thing that i'd worked on you know again i was only mm -hmm. a small part of that project but because i just was so vociferous mm -hmm. about attaching my name to that project you know on twitter and on instagram all these things you know really like being very self promotional in like kind of a gross way right Again, it's kind of like what you have to do, but because I've put in so much effort to do that over the years, now people know, you mm -hmm. know, that I was attached to this project and it's given me a, a big leg up in the world. Um, still not rich, <laughs> still don't know, <laughs> still don't know when that's coming, but, but it, it just means that, you know, it, that I'm, I'm kind of at a unique, yeah. a unique place in my career uh, that it's a very privileged place to be in. And I'm very, I'm very lucky, uh, mm -hmm. truly to have gotten that job and then to have gotten kind of, I don't know, the acceptance online, et cetera, to, to achieve that. And I think a lot of that has also just been like, you know, streaming, you know, meeting yeah, people. And, exactly. Yes. And, yes, and just, yeah. and just putting out, the, yeah, making the connections, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, mm -hmm. and I do feel, you know, and, and for anybody who follows me on Twitch or follows me on YouTube, you'll notice I put a great deal of emphasis on art education. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's, 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 that's truly what that, for me, in my soul, the reason I do that is because I feel I feel so profoundly lucky that I got to work on the things I worked on in the past and that I am able to make art for a living. Mm -hmm. And that's so rare. That's so rare and so lucky that like mm -hmm. that's I'm I it's almost like a twofold promise. One, I'm committed to making art for the rest of my life, even if I'm again continuing to just make bad money always. Mm -hmm. At least I get to do it and I get to mm -hmm. earn a living doing it. And two, I will put as much of my knowledge online as I can in these like concerted tutorials or these like how to videos, et cetera, because mm -hmm. I want everybody in the world to be able to have access to the best possible education. So yeah. that's, you know, so all the educational stuff I do, you know, part of that, it, it stemmed from an original desire just to get better by myself and to do so in a public environment. And that, thread continues but now in the recent years it's been more deliberate where i'm like no no i mm -hmm. i feel like i'm i'm buying my way into mm -hmm. feeling good about what i do for a living and being so lucky by just trying to pay it forward just trying to like you know and that and and i've said this before on previous adobe streams but like i really really am grateful to the company 
Adobe because when they signed me on as a streamer six, seven years ago, they had no demands on me. They were like, mm -hmm. just do what you want to do. And I was like, great. That means that I get to <laughs> te teach myself all the things I want to Mm -hmm. I want to teach, you mm -hmm. know, today we're working on perspective. Today we're working on shading. Today we're working on shape, shape language, et cetera. And Adobe never said, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. They just let me do it. And so it provided me a platform to learn and it provided me an ability to reach out to other people and, and pay that learning forward and, and, and spread it out there. So, yeah. So thank you, Adobe. Thank you for this, for this opportunity and for all the opportunities in the past. I've really been it's really, it's, it's very rare when yes. a company as big as Adobe gives you mm -hmm. free reign. Pretty it's very true. rare. And it, and it, it just shows that like truly, and I, and, and I, my relationship with them has spanned years as I know yours has as well. Truly, this is a company who, who is actually committed to mm -hmm. creativity and learning. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's just, right. that's, that's a beautiful, rare thing in this world. So. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look, listen to that great answer to the vague question and uh a couple times jonah you said i'm not sure i don't know how to answer it and then you answered it uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh but uh thank you to wade for word of the day vociferous and uh and and that has that is uh you know in, in all the different aspects of what you've done in your career is the same thing is being in the room being in the conversation being at the right place for that opportunity and though the world has changed uh, between showing up in person and just being part of the crowd that gets picked for a particular project, the internet has really opened up the world of opportunity. And though it is a lot of work, um, it is uh, that is one tool that we all have handy. And uh, like we mentioned, the the portfolio, the streams, all of those tools prove that you are talented for the project and well artists are our position needs to be uh i am talented check out my work and uh and uh, let me know if i'm the one for the project versus put me in coach where then we're we're looking for those handouts uh for and and we're mistreated because of that because you have this desperation so no, you have to put in the work with your talent, put in the work with the tools that we have handy. I know that Goldman Vision says social media is a slow burn. And like Jonah said, um, it's, it's working hard to get each and every follower waiting for that viral tweet. But the reality is it's not about the number of followers. It's about the quality of those followers. Mm -hmm. If you have art directors, creative directors following your work, they will call you when the job they know they have is for you, you know? So, mm -hmm. so if you have a hundred followers on any given channel, social media platform and their quality, man, that's, that's all you need really. And, uh, as an example, years ago, I met these uh, rich people once at a, at a hackathon, nice. <laughs> right? They, at a, they, at a, at a what -a -thon? hackathon, it's a, it's a hackathon, um, a startup hackathon where uh, technology people get together, write code, and create websites and applications over the weekend. It's a I've fun never, thing. I've never heard of that. that yeah. That, that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. really cool. And so then um, they, uh, uh, so as part of the, the sponsors, there was these guys there, and they are the owners of the number one supplier of toilets across the United States. Right. So they like they have 70 percent of the market. That's how rich they are. I did wow. not know that. I didn't think about it. And then years later, one of them gets, sends me a message to Instagram and says, hey, I've been following you on Instagram. I want you to work on a mural for us. And uh, and when I told them my price, they did not try to um, um, uh, talk you down. You they, they, that's right. They didn't try to talk me down. They said, OK, we'll get you a check. I was like, what? Ooh. And that. <laughs> Ooh, and, that's and that, a good feeling. Right, yeah. Even just just hearing that, like my like freelancer instincts, I'm like, who like I think I just started salivating. I was like, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I get to pay some bills. And uh and so it, it, without the hassling and stuff. And so and that's what I mean by quality, you know, audience and and people who follow your work is that 
you know, it's great to have fandom and, and folks who like your work, but as a professional illustrator, artist, creator, you know, you also want those connections from people who actually are in the industry and are going to move you on to the next project because they see your work, they value your work, and they understand how much is worth. And until you start proving yourself through this social media by sharing, streaming if you can, uh, posting, if you're not into talking like we are, I know we keep talking, I'm talking now, uh, but if you're good at writing tutorials and doing screenshots, all of those things add up online to the point where your your work cannot be denied and the project will come along to get to bring you in. So, yes, this is a uh, relationship, says Bruce. That's right. We are building relationships and it's not uh, a contest to see who's more famous. It's more about showing your work, being the good person and being a, a friendly person like Jonah is. He's answering the questions and talking and sharing. And sounds like a very friendly guy. So I think I am going to watch the rest of your videos, Jonah. Nice, nice. Uh, well, as I said, as I said Bruce, it's funny that Bruce says that. Bruce is an example of somebody who's been uh, viewing my content for years and been uh, active in my in my streams, et cetera, and always providing his feedback and two cents. Um, and, um, you know, I just gave that, that Barnes & Noble talk a couple of mm -hmm. weeks ago. Who was there? This guy showed up. He's like, hey, I'm Bruce. I'm like... Bruce Gonzalez. He's like, yeah, like, man, <laughs> what's up, man? You know, like, so it's, it's like, yeah, exactly. The quality mm -hmm. of who's following you. You know, I got, I get, he's, we got mm -hmm. in Bruce, we got good quality. And what that means is that Bruce shows up, you know, like that's, and Matt, you know, matters. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I, I get people often like basically saying like, oh, like you gave me advice on, on Instagram like years ago and I and it changed, it changed what I chose to do and all these different things. And I'm like, wow, mm -hmm. I don't even remember that. But like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, it's taking the time to talk to people, to talk to everybody, you know, like, like, like I, I literally respond to everybody on Instagram, everybody. Mm -hmm. And I just hit a hundred thousand followers. Every time mm -hmm. someone has a message, I, I respond because a, again, like the democratization of like information is really important. And like mm -hmm. when pe and people like a lot of people want to be, they, they want to be seen, they want to be heard. They have a question, all these things, but you take the time to engage with people and like, they actually don't forget it generally, mm -hmm. you know, it's, right. it's, it's pretty beautiful. And so, um, Yes, taking the time to talk to people, to make to make connections, that shores up just even the quality of those connections, mm -hmm. um, and that and that you know that that too extends to basically giving giving creative feedback to other people, giving advice mm -hmm. to other people, helping helping people out. Um, it does. I, I think I've been struck in recent years. They're like, oh wow, those people still remember me. You know, like mm -hmm. they wow, that's that's cool. Um, mm -hmm. I started streaming again. It, it had been a while. I just started streaming again, working on quiet. And, um, and I've had people showing up being like, Hey man, I haven't seen you in five years. What's up? You know, like, <laughs> wow, cool. You're back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Thank you everybody for the comments. Uh, Bruce Gonzalez says too kind Jonah, uh, Wade says Bruce is a great example. Yes. Of the relationships. Um, D says such great advice. Listen to this stream. Part of it is art. Part of it is great. Creative and relationship advice for a career create a career uh we're getting near the end of the stream it is i oh, think no. you have like a, a little over 10 minutes left oh no yes yes and i got i got stuck on this guy's um hand i, was, I started drawing a hand and i was like this hand is terrible <laughs> what am I, gonna do? I can't get stuck i can't get at the end of the stream i can't i've come this far i can't get stuck on a hand yes so move past it and, and come back to it later exactly exactly <laughs> exactly that's right. Uh, yeah, and uh, thank you, Goldman Vision, for the questions and comments on YouTube. Artists don't hire artists; rich people hire artists. That's correct. Or people, or projects with budgets hire artists. That's that's, <laughs> that's how it goes. Uh, that's true. Yeah, budgets. Um, so there is one question here in the chat by Wade, and uh, and uh, but he says one more hour. <laughs> Sure, sure. Tell B hands to push everybody off. <laughs> I'm sure the they stream. won't. Mind. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's Monday. They can take a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anthony says how time flew by fast. Yes, it did. Oh, I'm glad you guys feel that way. I, yeah, I'm having a great time. I really this is this has been fun. Mm -hmm. And thanks for thanks for hanging out with me, Daniel. This is great. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. I enjoy I enjoy hanging out on B hands and 
with other artists. This is this is my world. This is the world I want to live in, where everybody just wants to create something, have fun, and remember that being creative or drawing is a, a fun, um, a fun uh, activity. Is uh, some of us do it for uh, as the job, and we work on projects that we have to have done. This art has to be a certain way. But mm -hmm. at the but but you must always remember that I got into it because I enjoy it. So don't forget to enjoy the art process. Absolutely. So the question by Wade is Jonah, what's your favorite and least favorite part of the human anatomy to draw? Go. Woo. I would say <laughs> my favorite are faces. Okay. My least favorite, these ones right here. The hands, the fingers, oh, man. the hands. They're just, I mean, I'm, I'm better at them now than I've ever been. And that is not saying much, you know, um, <laughs> they're just hard They're. Mm -hmm. I read this, I read this great, um, onion article that was like incredible author, like only has trouble describing hands, you know? And like, <laughs> it was like, like every, and then, they, then they'd show like clips of his work and it would be like, it was like beautiful prose. And then the moment they got to like describing the hands, he was like, and then like the like the large meat spiders, whatever. Like <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that's how I feel. As I feel with with drawing hands, I'm like, oh, why are you so hard? Why are there yeah. so many parts to you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we all have hands, and so we know what they look like. And so if you draw them wrong, everyone's like, yeah, those hands are messed up. Like, that's right. Not, they can just tell. <laughs> so yeah, there's so many angles, so, so many, many <laughs> ways to lose proportion in them. Yes. That's why yeah. I intend for this character, Horns, to just have fists all the time. He's just angry all the time. <laughs> if, I, if I if I do it right, Dan, he'll never you'll That's never right. see his actual fingers. You know. There you go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, have a fist holding the the axe and mm -hmm. the weapons and stuff. I think that was Rob Liefeld who was uh, yes always drew with fists. <laughs> oh, and could never draw feet. You ever notice that too? Right, and no feet. feet. Correct. Yep. Yep. Oh, they kind of fade out the page. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh God. yes wade says hands are a love and hate situation and uh thank you rob for stopping by appreciate you says late to the party but it seems like it was a great party yes we've been having fun draw what you know wait scratch that says wade oh man yes you got you got to practice you got to practice you got to practice yeah there's mm -hmm. no way around it you got to mm -hmm. practice mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to. I've been trying, you know, and 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 like, and you'll never get to where you want to be, and I think mm -hmm. that's maybe an important thing to like maybe as we round the bend to the end here uh, to iterate. You know, I just did, I just did. Um, yeah, when I when I accepted my this Marvel Anatomy gig, I was like, all right, if I can do this, then that is my final exam on mm -hmm. figure drawing. Like mm -hmm. like like I, like the, I will be. I won't be a master, but I will have gotten to the point professionally where I can do an anatomy book on people. Mm -hmm. And I did it. But yeah. let me just reiterate, like I am nowhere near as good at, at human people and drawing a figure as, as I want to be. I'm still not. I'm, mm -hmm. Hands still crush me. You know, like, like mm -hmm. all these things are still so problematic. And so for every one of those drawings in that book, there's all these messed up drawings I did beforehand. <laughs> I, went, I remember even even doing the 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 art test for the book. I just I did these I did Wolverine like in all these different poses, and I was like, man, I suck. Like wow. these are not good. <laughs> um, but you know, and this is again why I kind of really recommend people let go when they're practicing of the idea of being perfect because. Mm -hmm. Fill your sketchbooks with with just garbage and you will improve and you'll get better. And mm -hmm. and recognizing that, you know, if you took the time mm -hmm. to make something, you would do a great job. You know, mm -hmm. like like, you know, but but if you just sit down and put down your pencil, you might not. That's okay. Mm -hmm. When I sit down and I put down a pencil, digital or otherwise, and I start working, nine times out of ten, it is not good. Mm -hmm. But you know, you take the time to learn from your mistakes, you take take the time to experiment and mm -hmm. not be afraid and and you will get better and so yes. um i'm still uh you know uh, uh i'm still nowhere where i want to be you know mm -hmm. um professionally or artistically mm -hmm. uh, and and i don't know that i ever will be you know um and i think what you said is the most important thing to keep in mind is are you having fun you know right yes are you are you yes. enjoying yourself you know that's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to and so the answer for me is absolutely i'm still having fun and yeah but i think a lot of that honestly is attributed to to streaming 
just being able mm-hmm. to like hang out with people mm-hmm. as I make art, you know, and, 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 and I think the community is kind of where it's at because you really come into contact with all these people who are on a similar path mm-hmm. as you. And I think just knowing that you're not alone in your struggles yes. with art is, is so important, you know, cause if you just lock yourself in a room and you sit there, you know, uh, uh, hoping you're going to get better and better, you know, it's not going to lead you to a happy place. But if you are out there chatting with people and being cognizant of just just the fact that we're all on the same journey, um, it, it can do a lot towards towards just making you really stop and enjoy your progress. You know. Yes. Yes. There you go. Awesome. Uh, D says mittens are the answer when there are no pockets. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and so Rob says not everyone has pant mitten. pockets to draw their hands in. And. Uh, <laughs> And even dresses, Becca says, even dresses now have pockets. So there you go. Yeah. I never have, <laughs> yeah. If you play your cards right, you never have to draw hands again. That's right. Yeah. And Wade says, there's not enough pockets in the world for the amount of hands I did not draw. <clears throat> but if you just listen what to just Jonah said, to what Jonah just said about drawing hands and how difficult it is, and then go through his Instagram and see that second post on the Instagram. First one is amazing because it's the Hulk. The hands are perfect. But then the second post right after that is a video of Storm. <clears throat> mm. And there is a moment when he's in, sitting there sketching and drawing on the hand. And and then there and there's so there's uh, two hands and one hand drawing. There's the hand shape drawing and then the bones drawn inside of that hand. That is crazy. And if that's in the book, I'm going to go to Barnes and Noble <laughs> and go buy that book. And study that because let me you just heard what Jonah said about hands, and there he goes with some amazing <laughs> hand drawings. So that means there's hope for all the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, any one of those images was just like it was like pulling teeth, you know, mm-hmm. just stressful and hard. But in the end, I pulled it together enough so that people wouldn't notice that I messed up. That's basically right. it. Or or like if you're gonna draw bad hands, do really good on something else so nobody notices the hands, you know? <laughs> right, Truly. right, right, right. Truly. What I what I wanna see is all the sketches right before the final. All the versions, totally. all the PSD files. That needs to be an art show by itself. It would it would be a pretty bad art show. It would be yeah. a, it, would, it would not be a good art show. But but if you're interested, yeah, you could check out the YouTube video I just loaded. Um, I know Wade has been posting uh, links, and I do include images uh, of the uh, some of some of the thumbnails I did. So if, nice. if you if you're curious and you want to see like what it takes to do a book, and you'll 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 look at that those images mm-hmm. and you and you go, oh wow, like a lot of what he did was crap. You know, a lot of what Jonah <laughs> did was just not good. But um, in the end, you know, I was able to pull together enough um, mm-hmm. to fill out fill out a book. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, nice. it's a journey. It's a journey. But um, and that's it. And, and it's a fun. It's a journey. And don't be afraid. I've done that. I've, I've said that to myself a lot of times, especially during that when I, I was doing that mural for uh, these rich people at their uh, warehouse. And uh, I'm good at drawing. I love drawing, but give me some lines to draw. And it's a pain because if the line is crooked for a letter, if you want to draw letters and the letter is crooked or the line is crooked, the line, the letter is going to look bad. And so here I was getting ready to work on a mural where it was just letters. It was a quote. And, uh, and, I, and I had to say it out loud to myself. I'm not scared. And then just step right into the wall and started drawing. And so that's it. You can't be scared. And even if you do feel scared, you got to just do it because it's going to take that many amount of times to get past that fear and then and then see the improvements. Yeah. Right. And with that mural, I mean, like, like, were you like, was the end result perfect? It was beautiful. Yes. (laughs) That's the confidence we all need. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I was like, I was all set to prove the opposite point. You, you have to be like, no, it wasn't perfect. I'll be like, yeah, see, that's it's the struggle. Right. See, but nobody else notices it. But you're like, nah, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. <laughs> that's right. It wasn't perfect. It was beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Was, that's it. You gotta have. You will build that confidence as time goes on. As time goes on. Very nice. Look at this work here. Thank so, you, Wade, for the links. Yep, we got a few couple more minutes. All right, let me see if I can I finish think. one more hand before the end. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
I can do it. I can do it, y'all. I can do it. One more fist. One more, one more <laughs> clenched fist. <laughs> it's hard for me to see. Oh, man. Uh, make sure that you uh, stay tuned and join Amy Hood from Hood Spa Design at the Typography Bootcamp every day this week at 1130 Pacific time. And I think that's around now, getting close to it. And then immediately following the boot camp, stick around for a new episode of Power Prompts with Cody Bear, followed by a new episode of Design to the Rescue with Paul Trani. Adobe Live replays are available when we're offline, and we have replays on both YouTube and Behance. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the, the creative goodies. And if you know how to follow links, find the Adobe Live Instagram and Twitter because uh, there's always an update or two you want to make sure you check on. Rob says it's tough to have a commitment and confidence like that, but good to know other artists struggle with that. And that's why I suggest that our show where we get to see all the drawings that led up to the final drawing that ended up in the book. Because if somebody who has a final drawing that looks that beautiful and, and it came out of them, and then you see the ugly drawings that came before, then that means that you can do, if you're doing ugly drawings, that means you can also do the beautiful finished one later. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. It's true. It's true. It's yeah. true. I, remember, I think, I think it was only until college when I, when I was um, forced to do a piece of art that actually took me longer than a single sitting. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the first time that I realized, like actually in my heart, I was like, Oh, if I sit down and like actually work on something day in, day out, like I can create something that I didn't think I could possibly do. Yeah. You know, right. and so it's just like you say, just like if you just chip away at a thing and if you approach problems, don't be scared of them, just approach them and do them and just put in the time. Yeah. Um, you, you could always do, you know, for me, it, my end result is always less than my vision and yet greater than, um, greater than I thought I could do. You know, it's like, and I think, you know, even when we made um, Skyrim, the game um i think i look at the final product and i thought to myself like this is not the game i thought it was going to be but it actually is cooler and bigger than i thought it could be you know like right. the, the, and right. so i think as with any project you know you just put in the time you put in the hours you put in the blood sweat and tears and mm -hmm. with with enough distance between you and that thing you'll be like oh you know what i did a pretty good job you know? yeah uh, so that's thanks. that's it Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Jonah. Give Jonah a hand and follow him everywhere. I am DTM Delta Tango Mike, and this has been a Dolby Live session. See you next time. Peace out, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>